Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to do the first of three videos on the subject of talking to your partner, talking to friends, talking to relatives, for example, about being a crossdresser. The three things I'm going to tackle within the videos is firstly, bringing up being a crossdresser for the first time. That will be the subject of this video. Then talking about raising the question of all the points about cross-dressing in a ongoing relationship. So when it's known but isn't spoken about. And the third video will be along the lines of how to translate that into future growth of a relationship. So today for this video, we're gonna talk about the subject of how to introduce cross-dressing for the first time. How do you bring up to someone that you are a cross-dresser for the first time. And I think this is a, for many people, this is the big hurdle. If you've been hiding yourself as a cross-dresser, either from family, friends, partners, whoever it is, you may have had experience in the past that are very negative about talking to people. And certainly I'll try and draw a little bit on what I've done within my relationships with other people around me. But I find that this first subject of bringing up that you're a cross-dresser, I find this is an internal debate. And I wanted to just put a little bit of a, a let's say a little bit of thought into that, a little bit of a conversation about what that means. So sitting down with someone and saying to someone for the first time, I'm a cross-dresser, is something that requires confidence. Confidence for me comes from assurance, it comes from knowing who you are and having faith and belief that what you are is okay. It's fine. It's not a problem being a cross-dresser. If you carry around with you guilt, fear, even if it's guilt and fear on behalf of someone else. So maybe you don't feel guilty about the fact that you're a cross-dresser. Maybe you don't feel that being a cross-dresser is wrong, but you are projecting someone else's fear and concerns about cross-dressing. If you're assuming that someone will react negatively, you are making that link between what you'll say to them and what they will say back to you. And even if you have all the confidence in the world, you can pre-structure a conversation and the way a conversation will go based on your, let's say your prejudices. We can call them prejudices about what someone else is going to think. My experience of talking to people being a cross-dresser, so I have spoken to, so over my life, the people who I've discussed this with include my wife, my father, my brother, and the next person will be my daughter. I've previously discussed it with uh, other partners that I've had, girlfriends, for example. And so this has come up in various degrees of depth, for example. I've never spoken to anyone to the depth that I've spoken to my wife, for example. That's the most that I've ever talked to anyone about this subject. But I've spoken to many other people, family members and friends about this as well, with various different degrees of success. What I can say for a fact, and I may be very lucky about this, is that I haven't told anyone who had a overwhelmingly negative or violent, let's say, reaction to it. I've had dismissive reactions and I have had, um, let's say, blank reactions where someone simply wants to ignore the subject and doesn't want to address it and discuss it anymore. That's fine. When it comes down to friends, I think you need to pick the people that you're going to talk to. And understanding a bit about how you think they'll react is certainly helpful for informing the conversation. But I do think that as human beings, we have a tendency to assume the worst and therefore we are quite likely to assume that our partner, etc., is is going to it's going to have the worst possible reaction of the ones that we think are likely. You know, most of us should be able to roughly judge how our partners will react to certain events, certain issues. But I think within a scale of reaction, we'll probably tend to assume it will be the worst. It's human nature to a certain degree. So with that in mind, how do you go about raising the subject to be a cross-dresser for the first time? Like I said, I think it comes down to confidence. If you have very little confidence, it's going to be difficult to sit into a conversation and just come out and say, I'm a cross-dresser, 
I'm not gay, I'm not going to transition, but I like dressing up in women's clothes. I don't have any shame about that. I don't feel it's a problem, but that's who I am. Do you have any questions? Now, if you've got it in you to do that, then I doubt you're in the situation where you are still debating whether you should or could tell someone. If you've got that level of confidence in you and you've got that level of assurance in your cross-dressing, then to my mind, you probably would have already done this. So assuming you can't or you would struggle to come straight out and say it like that, for me, there's a couple of things that need to, or could be done to set things up and give yourself the best opportunity to raise this as a subject. The first one is timing. So I've spoken to many people who talk about trying to find the right time. They want to tell someone this weekend, we're going to be doing this and I think that this would be a good time. I'll tell them now, um, you know, I'll, I, I think we should do it like this. That's how I'm going to plan to tell them. And I'll, I'll, when the time comes, I'll wait for the right opportunity. That opportunity will never come. I, I'd say that with some degree of certainty. That opportunity will never come and eventually you will be discovered. You might go your whole life and never be discovered, but it's more likely that you will be uncovered as a crossdresser than that this magical opportunity will present itself and you'll be in a position to, uh, to suddenly organically talk about it. Think about what, what is the right opportunity? Do you mean a space of free time when it's just the two of us and we have time to talk about it. Well, if that's what you're looking for, then that's one of the most easiest things to arrange with your partner or a friend or a relative. Simply go to someone and say, hi, I want to talk to you about something. Don't want to talk about it now. I want to get half an hour when we can sit down, talk about this subject, Go through it in some detail. It's nothing to worry about. I don't think it's anything to worry about, but I want to get some time to talk to you about it. Set a time. No, don't leave it too long. It's not in a week's time or something, but later that day, later the next day, and find, you know, try and think of a time when you're going to be uninterrupted for a period of time, half an hour, for example. Set it up. Box yourself into a corner a bit, so now you need to talk or two about the subject. You can't get out of that. Once you said I need to talk to you about something, you're either going to, you know, even if you bottle out of it, you're going to have to come up with something that you were going to talk to them about because you can't just leave that hanging. So you've kind of put yourself in a position where, okay, I've now set up the time. So this idea of a magical right time, now you've created it. If all you wanted was freedom and space to talk, now you've made it for yourself. You don't have to wait for it, you've made it. If you're looking for the subject to come up organically, and that's what you mean by the right time, then what are you talking about? Are you talking about you're watching a documentary and a trans person is on that documentary? Or the subject of cross-dressing comes up. You're watching something and there's Caitlyn Jenner all of a sudden. Okay, well, if that's really what you, you know, if that's what you want to be the trigger to your conversation, fair, you know, fair dues, but... You can, again, you can organize that, you can structure something around that, but I don't think it would be particularly helpful to have an outside influence suddenly trigger a conversation because to my mind, you're not in charge of it. You are going to have some kind of depiction of trans or something along those lines, some kind of existing conversation, and then you're gonna to need to steer that onto the subject of cross-dressing. My experience of that kind of scenario is that people tend to clam up. They don't open up, they clam up in those situations. If there's a general, you know, cross-dressing vibe in the room of you being one and maybe your wife suspects or whatever else, when that comes on the television, if you're honest, it doesn't suddenly bring up a lively debate on the subject of cross-dressing. You probably just hunch down a little bit lower in your seat and wait for the moment to pass. So what is this right moment? I don't think it exists for most people. I think it's something you have to engineer. So create the time, ask for a period of time, the same day, the following day, uninterrupted, and don't go over your allotted time. Try to stick to that amount of time, if you can. If you ask for half an hour, 
it should be a half an hour engaged conversation. I do this where we start off having a conversation and because I've got so much to say, I've got so much to talk about, I keep talking, I keep talking, I keep talking. And then before it, you know, before I really know what's happened, I've been talking for ages and the person I'm talking to hasn't said much at all. They're not engaged in the conversation anymore. Trying to keep it to half an hour, leaving time for answering questions, something along those lines, whatever time you have, 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever you set aside, try and keep it to that time. Try and see if you can keep it to that point and set up another time to talk the next day or a couple of days later. Don't leave it too long, but try and then say, look, I only wanted to bring this up. I wanted to raise this issue, but I don't want to try and answer everything now. Can we agree to speak in another couple of days? Have a think about it. Ask me some questions. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your concerns are and we'll talk about it. Invest in that kind of ongoing conversation. Coming back to the subject of how you first say things to someone, I think that's going to be very personal, it's going to be very individual, but I personally believe that it's best, if you can build up your confidence, it's best to do some rehearsal, sit in front of a mirror, try and practice what you're going to say, and if possible, try not to be too defensive. It's quite probable that you've had your own internal conversations about what you would say when someone says to you something. Someone says, oh, you must be gay. And you've probably had some kind of internal conversation with an imaginary person about what you would respond to that. And that's great. Don't heap all that on to the person you're trying to talk to. Give them space to talk back to you. Ask some questions. That's, for me, a key thing. Blurting out everything you want to say and taking up all the time is one way of doing things, but it's certainly not the most optimal way. Say what you have to say. Make sure you're clear. If you want to add in things that will help structure the, the overall conversation, then, then do so. Remember if you're talking to a parent, for example, your parents seen you grow up, they've seen all the weird and freaky things you've done through your life. Some, for some of them, this might just be another one, but most parents want to know, I say most parents would be most keen to know that you are happy, that you are enjoying your life and that you have a nice future. So reassuring people about what your future is with a parent, for example, is certainly something to slot into your early conversation points. With a partner, if you're honest with yourself, if you still find your partner attractive, if you're faithful to your partner, and if you have a future with your partner, without massively overhauling the whole relationship. These are things to get into that early conversation points. Look, I'm a crossdresser. I'm not gay. Okay, I'm straight. I'm attracted to you. I don't mess around, I don't fool around. Assuming these things are true. And I still want this for our future but I want our future with you knowing who I am, with you understanding who I am and how I feel. I want you to know me, all of me. And that is a powerful way to represent this to, to a partner. To a sibling, a friend, yeah, obviously you're going to be slightly lighter on the melodrama or the, the you'll be slightly less heavy on the future stuff etc 
But for a partner, this is critical. For most of us, it's probably telling our partner that's the most important thing to us. But if you're just telling a friend again, I'm a cross-dresser. I still go down the pub. I still play sports. I do all the stuff I normally do. This is who I'm going to be. You don't need to see it, for example, but if you're interested, I've got some photos. I can show you a photo. This is a photo of what I do. I like it, it's fun. This is what I enjoy doing with my time. Again, these are simple ways of broaching the conversation with a third party to try to get a very quick, safe place from which to stand in future conversations. And that I think is critical. When my partner found out that I was a crossdresser, I wasn't in control of it. So I've learned to do this from starting from, you know, standing in quicksand. That's effectively where I was. I was in quicksand. I was up to my neck in questions and problems and issues before I even knew where I was. And I had to try and pull myself out of that quicksand. I'll mime it for you properly. Pull myself out of that quicksand as best as I could by trying to you know, build myself a firm island to stand on, a very tiny little island of the truth, surrounded by quicksand. But I'm on this little island of truth now, and this is my core truth, and I'm sticking to this. So I won't be shifting from this, but I will be introducing other bits and pieces later, and I'll be, you know, hopefully widening this firm ground that I can walk on. But that was what I felt I had to do. But because I was challenged and because it came out in that way, I had to uh, to fight a rearguard action to be able to do that. If you're bringing this up for the first time, you have the opportunity to set out the place where you're going to stand. This is where I stand. This is me. These are my facts. These are facts about me. They're not necessarily up for debate. I don't expect these to change. And that's one of the key fears when you're, you're bringing these things up in relationships. It's that fear of change. It's, does this mean you're not who I thought you were? Are you still who I thought you were? And if you can demonstrate that you are, in bringing up this conversation, if you can demonstrate that here's what you thought you knew, and all of this is true, but here's this other thing. It's just another thing. It's not totally different. Here's what you thought was true and is still true, and this is this other thing you didn't know. And that really, for me, is the key way to try to, to raise this subject and to try and broach it in a way that will help you move forward as you have further conversations in the future. A couple of things I certainly wouldn't do, for example, um, turning up dressed, for me, is an absolute no-no. Uh, putting photos underneath someone's face so that they have to see it, I would say don't bother. Offer, say, I have photos, I can show you if you're interested, but it's up to you. Leave time for people to ask you questions in that first conversation. So invite questions. Ask questions yourself. You know, have you ever known a crossdresser before? One of the things that you want to try to do is you want to try to get a conversation going about what this really is and what it means. So asking questions like, is this the first time anyone's you've ever known a crossdresser? Do you know anyone else like this? Is this, you know, um, what have you, uh, what have you seen of crossdressers on TV? Something like that. Anything. Something to get the conversation going. Something to get someone thinking and talking about this as a normalised subject. And the world today, if you live in the UK and uh, US and other European countries, etc. There are plenty of countries out there where it's much more normalized than it has been in the past, and therefore you ought to be able to find examples of people who are somewhat more normalized. In the UK, you've got Idizad, you've got Grayson Perry, you have 
um, or there are a huge number of trans people online on YouTube, there are loads of people you can point people to and say, look, these are other people like me. There's me. Feel free to share this video. And I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you can get a conversation started by asking questions and giving a conversation a pause, picking it up again in a day or two, and trying to give it a structure of, this is how we're going to deal with this, or this is how I'd like to deal with it, but come tell me if you want to do something different. The one thing I think is, or I found important, was that quite early on, in early conversations, not our first conversation, but in early conversations, I did try to make it clear to my wife that this wasn't gonna go away. Um, I did say that I've tried hiding this before, I've tried keeping this back, but it's here, it's here to say it's part of me, and I don't want to live a lie. So I want to work with you on this. I want to share this with you to any degree that you find comfortable. And I think that has to be the key thing, is that, as I've said in other videos in the past, you've had your whole life to think about how you feel about yourself. If this is the first your partner, your friend, your relative has heard about this, they need time, plenty of time, to be able to digest, think, react, and then come back with more information. And I think that's quite a, it's quite a critical part of the process that you give them that time and that freedom to come back to you and give you more feedback later on. So that would be my advice for first time conversations. Specific amount of time, arrange it in advance, not too far in advance. Make sure you're free. Both of you are free to have the conversation get your opinion out there, get your firm facts out there as quick as you possibly can. Give yourself somewhere to come back to if the conversation goes off into tangents and goes down rabbit holes and you don't know what's gonna be happening. So give yourself somewhere firm to come back to and say, look, I've told you before, this is what I am. I wouldn't confuse the issue in early conversations, so Things like, are you gay, straight, bi? If you can genuinely say that you're attracted to your partner and you can put a simple label on it to say, that's what I am for the early conversations, then just do that. For me, it's saying, I'm straight, I'm straight. I'm straight, I'm attracted to women, I'm straight. I'm attracted to you, that's my thing. Now, the fact is that I'm somewhere between straight and bi, if I'm really honest. I'm somewhere on the gender spectrum. I'm not entirely 100% straight. I'm somewhere between straight and bi. I'm not bi, you know, and I'm definitely not gay, and I don't find men attractive, but I find feminine people attractive. I find femininity attractive, even if I know that's a man. So, you know, I have to consider myself somewhere in that spectrum, but not women only. So that is a kind of nuance that should come out in later conversations. You don't want to get stuck into that kind of conversation on your first conversation on the subject of cross-dressing. So one means find the simplest way of explaining who you are and leave the later more nuanced conversations about gender, sexuality, etc. for later. If you as long as you're clear on your firm ground, your truths, if you're clear that you will never transition, as I have been for you know, 10, 11 years or so, I'm clear that I'm never going to transition. If you have that as firm, solid truth, then get that out there as quickly as you can. One of the things that will become a problem as you go into further conversations, I'll talk about this in, in the second video, is the idea of escalation or scope creep or things um, moving forward and being a journey. 
you're not responsible for what might happen in the future and it's not something where you have to know where you are in the future but you have to be able to clearly articulate what you are today where you stand today what is your truth today and give time for someone to then come back to you and ask you questions and raise their concerns on this subject and try and keep it to that that firm time you set out um, letting the conversation meander letting it go on and on is not helpful um, trying to keep to a specific subject if you can is much more useful anyway that's my first video on the subject of raising this for the first time just a quick recap set aside a specific amount of time not too far into the future in the next day something like that in a couple of days time make sure you're free make sure you're available make sure you are not going to be interrupted and are free to discuss things get your case out there as quickly as you can as straightforwardly as you can leave plenty of time to have questions asked to you and don't try to force things onto other people give them time to have their reaction give them time to think come back to you later and ask questions ask them about their previous experiences ask them get a conversation going as much as you can to try to bring up something that you can work on in the future that would be my advice for those first conversations and as i said previously waiting for it to happen organically waiting for the right time to have this conversation i think you'll be waiting forever so make the right time yourself anyway I hope this was useful. Any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like my videos, you can feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Click the little bell to stay notified about upcoming videos. Um, yeah, look forward to talking to you guys on the next video in this quick series. So thanks so much for joining me here today. And as ever, bye. Bye.